Good morning, we're here today to talk about uh, what to think about when you're planning a backyard. We've all been spending so much time at home and we're looking out our windows and we're like, okay, I wanna get going on this project, so what are we going to do? So there's the five things that I wanna talk about. Uh, the first one that's most important, and it's usually the first question we ask as well, is what's the light like? So if you have lots of shade trees around, uh, does it get full sun? Does it bake all day? Is it a really hot and dry spot? All of these things are things to consider. Uh, the next one is soil. So soil is what our plants are gonna be growing in. It's so, so important. We wanna know if there's lots of clay. Is, uh, is it nice peaty and loamy soil? Is it rich in nutrients or is it clay? If it's clay, you're gonna to have to amend the soil a little bit, adding some bone meal, adding some compost, um, some peat, just to bulk it up a little bit and loosen up that clay. The last one, the third one, sorry, is um, thinking about what you're going to be using this space for. So over here, we've got this patio. So we're gonna be spending time hanging out back here. Um, there's a waterfall. What kinds of things are we going to be doing? Do you have a dog? Do you have kids? Do you need to leave a grassy area? All of these things are things we need to keep, keep in the back of our mind. Also, maintenance. Are you here all of the time? Do you work a lot? Do you have time to spend gardening in your backyard? Do you want just a low maintenance yard? Thinking about planting more trees and shrubs, uh, evergreens especially keeps it really low maintenance. Uh, perennials, you have deadheading and cutting back and things like that. Annuals, even more work, you have to fertilize, deadhead, all of those things. So if you want low maintenance, stick to more trees, shrubs, um, definitely evergreens. They're very, very easy to keep and working in some low maintenance perennials as well. And the last one we have to think about is year-round interest. So you're like, okay, I, I, you buy this flower now, you love it, but in you know three weeks time, it may not be blooming. So thinking about plants that offer year-round interest, especially when you, you know, look out your win window in the winter time, do you have anything to look at? Is it gonna be just a whole bunch of, you know, bare, bare trees? Are you gonna have some evergreens? Do you have, you know, red osier dogwood, for example, that's got nice red stems? Are there perennial grasses that you can see? All of those things are things to keep in mind, especially, you know, like out of your kitchen window, your dining room or bedroom window. Um, think about all of those things. Uh, one of my favorite little tips too, is if you have any opening windows, uh, like near a bedroom or a space that you spend a lot of time in, plant fragrant plants like lilacs or mock orange. And then that way, when you open your window, you get that nice fragrance filling the house. So just a few things to keep in mind, really, really take a, a good look at your space, know what you're gonna use it for. Think about the time that you have to put into this. And, and also just, what you, what you kind of want to see. So everyone has a vision, Pinterest is full of all sorts of things, but we can usually help you find the plants that will work really well here and help you achieve that look. Um, but before you get digging or before you do anything, make sure that you call Alberta One Call just so you know where your underground utilities are. Good morning, this is part two to our landscaping video and designing your backyard. Uh, so we're just gonna go over some of our points we mentioned in our first video and how we use them to plan this yard and how we, we finished everything and it looks, it looks amazing. So the first thing that we're going to talk about uh, is light. So in this yard, there were two sections. So we had a lower light area. So got a little bit of morning sun, but then shade the rest of the day. So in this area, we chose lots of hostas. They had good texture. Uh, we have some bugbane here, uh, emerald spreading yew, some virginia and coral bells. And we mixed all these guys up so that we would get lots of texture, lots of color, um, but even in a low light area. So this is our sort of lower light. And on the flip side here, this is the area that gets all the afternoon sun. So it just, it heats up, it has lots of, lots of light. And so we chose um, Barberry here, which are these bright red ones here. Um, some more color, because we have the white background was Panther Nine Bark. So Nine Barks do really, really well in full sun. And you can get away with the burgundy colored ones uh, in, in sunlight. If you have a lower light area, maybe try the more golden or green ones. And we also, my favorites, we planted some hydrangeas in here. So hydrangeas, there's two groups. I mean, um, if you watch our hydrangea video, you know that they're shade loving and they're sun loving hydrangeas. We chose the sun loving hydrangeas here. Also in the front, we use some junipers as ground cover, one of our favorites that does really well here, the Calgary carpet. Uh, we have some upright junipers to give us some color um, and also some easy day lilies as well. So we chose low maintenance plants um, and, and things that tolerate the sun really, really well. This looks amazing. Um, the second thing I was talking about was soil. So soil, again, uh, we found out that this was all clay here. 
which is the norm for most people. So upon planting, we worked in lots and lots of compost, so sea soil uh, and bone meal. So we added nutrients back to the soil. And we also added organic matter to break up some of that clay and to give the, the plants a really good chance and let those roots get established into healthy, rich soil. The purpose of this backyard or you know thinking of what we're doing here is entertaining a little bit hanging out by the fire so we have a fireplace over here we've got our waterfall <laughs> but also there's a dog that lives in this yard um, this is the perfect dog pond conveniently just discovered it's a big old drinking water bowl it's a big bath but lots of these plants are tough so we have, um, there's dogs that run around in here, so there's mulch to cover the ground so we don't get dirt all over the place. Uh, and they're plants that won't get uh, sort of beat up by, by dogs so when they're running around, ripping around, having fun. The other thing too is uh, thinking about our maintenance level. So uh, the homeowner here, he works a lot, travels quite a bit. So we're looking for low maintenance plants things that don't need to be fussed about. We don't need to do too much pruning. Again, you can see lots of evergreens, lots of shrubs. Um, and just a few perennials. And we chose low maintenance perennials like sedum and daylilies and uh, perennial grasses as well. They're kind of scattered throughout the yard because in the fall, all you have to do is just trim them right down to the ground. That's it, super easy. And the shrubs, you just let them do their thing. Okay, so thinking about our maintenance levels again, very, very important. If you travel a lot or you go away uh, or go to the lake on the weekends, just think of plants that can fend for themselves. So again, sedum, drought tolerant, once established. Same like our barberry and our junipers, all drought tolerant, once established. The other thing and the most, the last, the last point we had here was our year round interest. So there's lots of big windows on the back of this house. So when we were planning this garden, we were looking out the windows and looking at what we would see. So on the back side here, which is where all the windows face, we have lots of evergreens. Um, we have some upright junipers. We have a unique weeping white pine here. So in the winter time, these plants are gonna provide us with winter interest and give us something to look at. As well, the perennial grasses. So I love perennial grasses. Uh, because you don't need to cut them down in the fall. You can actually let them stay upright over winter and they kind of, they dry perfectly. So you just let them stay up. They give you a little bit of movement in the winter and it's also something else to look at. And eventually, when these hydrangeas here, so we've got two, a uh, little quick fire and we have the lava lamp moon rock here. When these hydrangeas get nice and big and they're uh, you know tall enough to stand above the snow line, you can let those flowers stay on. They dry perfectly into the same hydrangea shape, but again, that adds some winter interest so that you have something to look at. Our winters are long, so we're always thinking about all the seasons here. So those are just some of the things that we, we uh, we were talking about in our in our first video and this is how we applied them into this yard and it turned out beautifully we worked in lots of color lots of textures easy easy plants things that do really really well in alberta here and i think just using these tips and kind of seeing what we did here is a really good way to get you going on your project so thanks for joining us <laughs>